What's up, Neo family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Neo, Tesla Spy, and the overall markets and break down what's going on with the market moving forward as we have big catalysts for next week. But you should be watching first. We have big projections coming out from banks for Neo. But just notes that I am not a financial planner, so make sure you take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Mumu link. If you deposit $100, you're guaranteed five free stocks. If you deposit a thousand bucks, you're guaranteed 15 in total, not to mention an 8.1% APY on uninvested cash. So friends in just a couple of weeks. So check it out before they run out. Anyways, for Neo, we're seeing a very, very nice balance right now. So we're trying to see this rebound attempt continue. We're looking at this very, very key level around this five area, which is where we have this tough resistance. And we have this gap to fill all the way up to about 5.25, which does give Neo some potential for next week. But the question is, what's going to affect Neo in the markets? What is the news saying about it? I just want to mention to everyone that Right now, we had some interesting unemployment numbers that came out. The market saw a little bit of a pump in the very, very beginning of the day. Then it started to dump really hard, and the market continued to sink as time went on. As the market sank, we saw this drag down a lot of different uh, sections of the market as we started to see lots of gaps getting filled and the market continuing to dump. So going into next week, we're going to be looking to see if the market could form a bottom very soon for a temporary balance that could be forming. I just want to note that going into Monday, we have very minor data. For Tuesday, it's also very minor, but then for Wednesday, we have a very, very important catalyst. We have the CPI report coming out. This will be the last CPI before FOMC. It's also coming out a week before the FOMC meeting. So this is going to be a very, very big catalyst. We'll see what this ends up leading to, so get ready for some high volatility by Wednesday. For Thursday, we have the PPI report coming out. Then for Friday, we also have the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report. That's all going to be more minor, but the main days are going to be Wednesday and Thursday for data. Then for FOMC, as a reminder, it's going to be on the 18th of September. Uh, right now, the market thinks there's a 70% chance we get a 25 basis point cut and a 30% chance we get a 50 basis point cut for now. September 18th is going to be very important, so we'll see what the Fed ends up announcing and how things end up going. This is what the earnings calendar looks like. There's not really much coming out. We just have like Oracle, GameStop, and a few more like uh, retail, like uh, Big Lots also coming out. It's nothing too crazy. As far as NEO goes... Neo is aiming to deliver over 220,000 cars in 2024. Please note that they're currently at about uh, 128,000. So not, it's not bad whatsoever. They'd have to do another about a little bit under 100,000 for the rest of the year. So September, October, November, and December, if they do around uh, a little bit under 25,000 per, per month, that's going to be very, very promising, especially because Q4 tends to be stronger for them. So if they put an average of that many, 23 to 25,000 per month for the rest of the year, we could be reaching that goal. That's going to be very useful for them. Now, at the same time, with those goals coming out, we're also seeing many analysts becoming very bullish on NEO after this big drop that we've seen. We're starting to see Jeffries coming out, and they're saying that NEO is once again uh, very likely to see very, very good growth. They're also looking for high demand that's coming out for the L60. City Research is also giving NEO a buy rating, so that's some good news for them. And I'm starting to see some new uh changes right now from these different analysts we're also seeing lots of very very strong growth forecasts from jeffries and city it's a good piece of news and then also deutsche bank is coming out they're saying some big news they're saying that they're expecting neo to launch six new products and achieve 330,000 unit sales in 2025 that's some insane growth that's over uh, you know, 30,000 per month are very close to that many, getting closer to 30,000 per month instead of 20,000. That's insane growth that they're looking for on average. We'll see if NEO achieves that, but that's going to be a very, very big milestone for them as time goes on. For NEO, there's a lot of growth projections. They had a good earnings report, which is still helping the share price. So the question is, what's going to happen from here? Now, I just want to focus on the charts. So as far as NEO goes, we're looking more bullish as long as we hold above $5. I think we might be going for that gap for that 5.25 area. And if that breaks, we're looking for 5.61 for the 200 EMA on the daily. Might push a little bit more before it tries to start to dip a little bit. But overall, the chart still remains bullish. And we have potential for 5.25 for next week, as long as we hold above 5. Now, on the other hand, we have SPY. SPY has been dipping quite a bit. Um, I'm going to be looking at this key support right over here on the weekly chart. We have our 20 EMA right over here around this 538 area. So I presume what could be happening is we might dip a little bit more, but we'll see if we get bought back up and if buyers defend this over time. I presume that's going to be the most likely possibility for the weekly charts. Even if we do dip below this to fill our gap towards 534, we could still get bought back up. And as long as we hold above 538 by next week's close, there could be a chance that this will try to rebound. So watch and see if we dip a little bit more and we get a bounce. That's the most likely possibility since we've dropped really hard already. And we're approaching this very, very key support. So I think that's the most likely case. For Tesla, we're dipping a bit, but we haven't lost key support quite yet. I want to say that because when you look at the four-hour time frame, 
we have this big yellow trend line we're holding. See this yellow line right here? We're holding this very, very nicely. So for now, we'll be watching to see if Tesla holds this. If we do dip a little bit, we have to try to reclaim this because there have been instances where we did dip below it only to get bought back up. So we'll see. If Tesla does not hold above 210, we're looking for 208 as our target. But I think that Tesla could attempt to rebound off one of those supports. So we'll be watching to see if that ends up being the case or not. For the QQQ, we're currently bearish, but we're going to be looking at support at 445. If 445 holds us, we could try to rebound. If not, we could be getting very close to about 440 flat. But I think that there is potential to see some buyers defend 445. So we'll see how it holds the support. If it doesn't hold, we might go a little bit lower, get closer to 440 before we try to see some buyers defend it. So as of right now, we look bearish, but we'll see where the buyers defend. Apple's dipping a little bit. We're going to be looking to see if we hold 218 or not. Uh, we'll see if we bounce off that or not. So watch that very, very carefully. That's going to be very, very key for these levels. So that being said, when it comes to other factors, we have the IWM. The Russell is continuing to dip. And as we're falling, we're going to be looking to see if 206 holds. That's where we have this imbalance. So watch and see if that ends up holding or not. If we lose 206, we could be looking for a bounce. And if we lose this, we will, we're going to be dipping all the way down to even lower levels. So we'll give this the time it needs. With that being said, guys, uh, that's it for my analysis, at least for the time being. Uh, just a few more like Amazon. We're going to be looking at 168 to see if we hold that. 170 and 168 is our main supports. Uh, it could dip a little bit more towards that before it tries to bounce. Meta is losing 500, so I think it might dip a little bit more. We could, get, we could get very close to about 490 before we try to see some kind of bounce. So we still look bearish. The market looks like it's going to dip a little bit more, but I still think that the market will find its bottom early to mid next week before we see some buyer's defense. That's my view of the markets for now. For Neo, we'll see if $5 could hold. This is going to become previous resistance, becoming support now. We'll see if this holds. If you hold this, our target's going to be 5.25. And if this fails, we will be looking for a dip. So we'll see how things go, at least for us moving forward. But with that being said, I just want to say that I'm very, very excited about Neo's future. We're seeing some very, very strong growth potential projections for Neo going into the end of the year. We're seeing a lot of growth in terms of their sales and margins will improve as time goes on as well. So I'm very excited, especially as interest rates start dropping globally. This will be big for Neo. I can't wait to see how growth ends up looking. I think they will be achieving those goals. I think they have a lot of potential to do so. And I think that as time goes on, this will greatly benefit the share price. I think Neo will be trading much higher by next year into the 8 to $10 area. And I think we just need some time to see this really, really grow. Now, with recessionary fears, there still could be more turmoil for the markets in Neo, even into early next year. But I think that Neo will make a full recovery and we will be seeing amazing growth as time goes on. And this is just the very beginning. So the dips are very, very good buying opportunities. And I can't wait to see what the future holds. All right. So I thank you guys so much for listening. I'll see you guys in just, uh, I would say, by Sunday for another update. Until then, thank you for listening and peace out.